Hi guys, and in this series of tutorials, I'm going to be showing you how we make this sci-fi watch effect. Check it out. So uh, I'm going to take you through step by step how this is done. Uh, but in this first tutorial here, um, I'm going to be showing you uh, how I made this final composition. And then in future tutorials, I'll be showing you how I actually created that head-up display itself. You'll be able to find those over on my blog. So if you go over there, you can also download the project file and you can download these various head-up displays that I've created. Um, so let's jump in uh, to a motion project. And I've already imported into here our video file. And our time is around uh, eight seconds or seven, seven and a half seconds for this. So here's our raw video. There's me hitting the button and hit the button again. And then we're going to hit it a third time. So what we're going to actually do is be able to change the head-up display from one to another and then shut it off on the final press. So where do I get these head-up displays from and how do we create those? Well, you could draw it directly into here um, you know, um, for, for this project, but what I've done is I've created a separate motion file, uh, motion project, and inside here I've got lots and lots of different types of um, sci-fi neon glowing head-up displays uh, and they're animated. So we've got um, lines such as this, uh, I've, met, I've created one which is uh, like, like a map. Um, so these are all different types of head-up displays and I created also then a bunch of these um, circular type ones. So we've got a bunch of different ones here. You can download this project file from my blog. So if you go over to there, it's finalcutprotutorials.wordpress.com. Uh, you can find the link underneath here in the video and you'll be able to download this motion project file and you can see there's all these different types of animated um, graphics that I've created. And you can combine these, you could layer them on top of one another, um, like so, to create your own almost infinite number of different combinations and effects that you can create here. Um, so I'm going to take one of these to start with. So we'll grab um, this and then we'll just right click on it and we go to copy. Then we'll come back over to our motion project here. I'm just going to paste that group into this motion project. So we just right click and go to paste. And you'll see now we have our, whoops, I should put my playhead in the correct place. Um, now we have our head up display being played over the top of our video. So that's how we get our head up display into here. Now, obviously, we need to um, do some motion tracking to this and we also need to scale it up properly. So let's um, just go over now and select our, our, our um, circular project there and we will scale this so it's approximately the size of our watch face. And then we're going to want to position it. So we'll need to do some um, dragging so we get it approximately in the center of the face. And then we're going to want to do some rotation in 3D space. So we need to transform it so that it kind of lines up with our watch face. So we'll rotate the text around so it's parallel with our numbers there. And this will just make it look like it's really being projected from our watch. So you've just got to adjust the rotation just to get the angle just right. We might want to uh, scale it a little bit bigger and adjust our center point position. And that's about right for us. Okay, now we want it to look like it's hovering above the face. So uh, we're going to want to adjust the position again of this so that it is floating above our face. So let's just drag it up. There we go, and this will just create that effect that it's floating above our watch face. Just play around the position until you get it looking believable. Okay, so it's probably somewhere around there. Right, now we're going to want to motion track this so that as our wrist moves around, our head-up display moves with our wrist. 
So to do that, we're going to use the motion tracking behaviors. So we'll go over to our library, motion tracking under behaviors. We go to motion tracking, and then we'll go to match move, and we'll drag that onto our complete head of display group there. Now you see you get this little red dot here. Now this is going to be the point on our watch that we're going to track. So I'm going to use the corner of the five and the screen because it's a high contrast, easy to define point that we can track. So I'll just drop this onto that corner there and then we will go to inspector and analyze. Now this might take a few moments because we're going to have a little, little bit of computation that the computer needs to do here while it tracks that point and uh, I'm doing screen capture and recording at the same time to make this video so it uses up quite a lot of my processor speed but hopefully this will work out for us so you can see it's tracking the corner of that five Wherever we're moving our wrist, it's moving our head up display with it. So it takes a few moments to complete, 75%, almost there. That looks a bit jerky right now, but when you actually render out the final one, it'll be quite smooth. Okay, that's good enough for us for now. And there we go. So now let's uh, play this. Like I say, it'll be a little bit jerky. It won't be quite completely smooth. When we render it out, it will be. So there we go. That's our head up display tracking our wrist movement there. All right, now we want to get the um, head up display to look a bit more believable. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do first of all is I want to darken up our background. So we'll go over to our library and we'll go to filters, we'll go to color correction, and I want to drag into my movie the brightness and also the contrast. So we'll drag both of those over. I'm going to take down the brightness a little bit on my video here, and I'm going to up the contrast. Now I'll adjust the brightness again. There, so we've got a slightly darker background so that our head up display will stand out a little bit more. Okay, now the head up display still looks a little bit fake, a little bit unbelievable. It's not really look like it's, it's really glowing and lighting up there. It still looks a little bit superimposed onto the screen. So we need to add some randomness to this. So we'll go back over to here. And um, I'm going to add in um, some glow to start with. And let's just adjust the glow a little bit. So we've got a little bit more glow to our screen. Now I want to also adjust the opacity. So we'll come over to our group properties and we'll knock the opacity down so it's almost transparent. Now we'll go back to our glow and we might want to up the glow a little bit again. Okay, and then we're going to grab our um, brightness from our color correction again. We'll, we'll add a brightness to here and we're also going to add a contrast as well. So let's increase our contrast slightly and we'll also up our brightness. Let's lower down our opacity again. Okay, so that now is beginning to look a little bit more believable like it's really glowing and it's really being projected from our from our screen now I want to add some randomness to this because it's still a little bit too uniform so again we'll come over to our library and we'll go to behaviors and um, 
think it was under simulations. Um, let me find where this was under again. Hold on. Randomize. It's under parameter and randomize. So we'll drag that now into our group there. Now this allows us to create a, a random effect for, for almost any parameter that we like. So let's go to the um, randomize here and we want to apply it. You can see we want to apply to properties, uh, now filters, brightness, uh, glow, where do we want it? We want it to properties, blending and opacity. And then we're going to adjust the amount that we can wiggle by and our frequency and that will give us a little bit of randomness then to the opacity. It's a very very faint effect but you can see here if you look at our opacity values as I move the playhead around you can see that it's, ad it's adjusting, it it's jumping around a little bit. So that's creating some random effect to our head up display there. So it just doesn't look quite so superimposed. It looks a little bit more natural like a like a hologram would be. Yes, you can see now it's flickering around a little bit. So just play around with those parameters until you get it uh, looking approximately how you want it to look. So you can see there we've got a little bit of flickering now to our head-up display as it's being displayed. So it doesn't look quite so unbelievable. It looks a little bit more natural, like it's really there on the screen. So um, the other thing I'm going to want to do then is I want to add some more randomness to it. I'm going to add a wriggle. This will cause it to do exactly what it says, but it will cause it to wriggle around a little bit so it doesn't stay always completely centered on that motion tracking. We can increase the amount of wiggle. And the amount that we're going to wiggle around. So that just is they're just subtle effects, but they just allow us to enhance it and make it look a little bit more believable. So that's um, how basically we go about doing the motion tracking and setting up our screen. Now in the future tutorials, I'm going to be going on to how I actually created these head-up displays ourselves, and we'll also be cleaning up as well a little bit of this motion tracking. You can see the angle of our watch changes as we move down. So I also want the angle of our head-up display to move and, and move with that. So we'll do some keyframe animation later on this. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in part two of this tutorial.